you see that's ugly. Let's fix it. Hey there, tech enthusiasts. Are you challenged with organization on your growth through your digital and technology transformation? Well, you landed on the right video. Today, I'm excited to share with you a significant milestone in my digital journey. A few years back, I shared with you how I grew my home network from a basic ISP supplied modem slash router to a fully fledged ubiquity setup, all housed in a custom wooden rack that I crafted myself. And I can't wait to share with you today's final setup. Techies, system integrators, DIYers, network engineers, IT administrators, telecom techs, and more. You're going to love this video. Any true network revitalization starts from the ground up, meaning the infrastructure has to be in place. I've gotten my hands on a two post 19 inch 45 RMU telecommunications standard rack that I got for free. I know many of you are going to suggest that I go with a four post rack, but space is of the essence and I got this for free. Now comes the fun part. I've gone ahead and lined up my 19 inch rack exactly where I wanted in the basement and use a square to line it up correctly. I've gone ahead and marked each hole so that I know where to drill. And I get to use my Makita XPH 14Z 18 volt LXT lithium ion brushless cordless half inch hammer drill. I've gone ahead and also placed a piece of tape on the drill bit so that I know how far to drill. So when I place the bolts, I know that they're not too far down. The fasteners we're going to use to hold down the rack will be the redhead true bolt wedge anchors that are three eighths by three and three quarters. These are to be torqued down to 25 foot pounds. You'll first see me torque them down to 10 and then I'll torque them down to 25 foot pounds. You don't necessarily have to torque them down as I got a lot of feedback from the internet, but because in the back of the package it says that it works best if torqued down to 25 foot pounds, that's what I'm gonna do. If you work in IT, whether that be telecommunications, IT infrastructure, networking, or some type of engineering, and you've got any type of setup at home, we all know that our home wiring is usually way worse than what we have in the office. So please don't judge me too harshly. What you see in front here is my wooden cabinet that I'm prepping for the hot cut. You see, I run my home business, I also work my nine to five, and my family consumes the internet pretty heavily. So just like on the job, a network outage here in my home is felt pretty harshly and I get a lot of heat for it. So I've gone ahead and prepped the wiring so that it can easily be moved. I've also prepped all the devices. They're ready to be moved to the 19 inch rack that I'm showing here. I've also added a set of cabinets so that they can start holding material that I use to upgrade and make changes to my network. I've also added the power unit up on top. Everything has been staged for that moment that we're going to complete the hot cut. Any well-planned hot cut needs a backout plan. So I went ahead and invested in T-Mobile's 5G home internet for $50 as a backup. And hopefully I won't need to use it. And going forward, I have a secondary internet line. Shh, it's late into the night and the family is fast asleep. This is how the hot cut is going right now. I've removed the devices out of the wooden rack that I created myself and placed the devices on the 19 inch telecommunications rack. I've gone ahead and placed some tape to kind of gauge where I want to hang things, looking for airflow and things of that nature. I've also placed some shelves for support as I do the install. And here's what it looks like now that I've pulled the cabling out. The cabinet or the wooden rack is empty. And now the 19 inch rack is somewhat populated with the devices in there. The shelf is holding the modem and some other home things. And at the bottom of the rack, I've got some drawers that I purchased from Amazon. These are going to help me store things that I use for networking and are going to be right in front of that rack when I need them. You'll notice that the 19 inch rack is pretty close to that white cabinet. Uh, that's okay. I know that I'm never going to go really beyond 16 inches past the back of the rack. Now what we're seeing here is the coax cabling that was in the wooden rack. I've dressed it and placed it. This is all the coax that is for over the air antenna TV. And I've got a booster there. I've also gone ahead and started cleaning my cabling there. I didn't get a chance to show you, but I'll show you some pictures here shortly. 
this is what the cabling looks like now i've gone ahead and pulled it through and began dressing it and made some preliminary connections so that most of the house and its devices including cameras all have the internet working and populated now for the tools and equipment that will bring this build together let me introduce you to patchbox a company founded to take on the challenges of the IT industry. When Patchbox heard that I was working on this project, they offered to send me their impressive cabling system. As you know, I'm not sponsored by anyone and I have never accepted a free item that would bind me in any way. Patchbox is the first I have ever agreed to accept an item from with the mutual agreement that I would be able to review the items honestly and keep my artistic vision and the capability to speak openly and honestly with my audience regarding my thoughts on their products. Luckily for them, I love their stuff and I have already been ordering it for clients. I already also own the awesome setup.exe tool which can hold up to 110 pounds of equipment to be racked and yet it also doubles as a stand for your laptop while you provision or configure the equipment that you just racked. This tool was developed by network engineers for network engineers and it shows. But if you work in the IT industry at any level under that umbrella and you install equipment, this tool is a must. They did send me their dev mount, an innovative take on the cage nut that simplifies and speeds up the process of installing and removing network equipment. It's worth its weight in gold. But in case you were wondering how much weight it can hold up, it can hold up to 33 pounds of network equipment. Boy, I wish I had this 20 years ago when I was installing and racking and stacking hundreds of devices and network elements. It would have really saved my back. The thing is simply amazing and yes, I'm totally in love with it. While this two post rack project that I'm working on won't be able to use this awesome little dev mount and I really can't use the setup.exe on it, I will be installing a switch in my four post rack where I will show you how to use the setup.exe and the dev mounts there because I can't wait to install dev mounts for the rest of my equipment in my four post rack. Patchbox also sent me two of their innovative cable systems known as 365. These units come with 24 cassettes each that house a flat cable inside that is retractable, making even the most novice installer's job look like a million bucks. It also saves tons of time, and that's what I need on this project, because time is what I don't have on this refresh. So this is a major lifesaver for me. Thank you, Patchbox. While the 365 units are ideally designed for a small cabinet deployment, it will work perfectly for my home setup, as I have designed my equipment's positioning to be close while maximizing airflow. This design tightly resembles a small cabinet setup. The two units consist of a frame, the patch catch, what they lovingly call their cable management system, and the 24 eight RMU long cable cassettes with retractable cables ranging from colors red, blue, yellow in CAT6 UTP, but note that they also have STP or shielded cable available. I also requested for multi-mode fiber in OM4 LC to LC configuration. I went with this rack specifically because this is a small home that doesn't have a lot of room. And this is a noisy room. So this is where I wanted to put my loud switches with lots of fans and all kinds of stuff. And as you can see, we have an opening there where we're gonna add our Patchbox 365 unit. So we're gonna go ahead and install that right on RMU 37, the one that's open. And as you can see right above that, we have my 48 port switch with the patch box already installed. I needed that to get up and going before the video so that I can get the network running because I can't have the network down for too long. This is in a home environment, but in a business environment, this is where this 
absolutely shines. I'm telling you, as I've installed it for clients in the past, which don't always let me film in their rooms for security, they have told me they love it. They can easily move things around. Everything's color coded, everything's labeled. So this cartridge right here has a locking mechanism right there, which also acts as a label holder. You'll see that in play when we do the install. The label goes right here and it'll tell you what it goes to, right? So that's awesome. The other thing that's awesome is that these cables come in a specific color. So you can ask for them in red, violet, yellow, all kinds of colors. Now this, as I was mentioning, is a lock right here. So if we pull out that way, now we can push in this way. Look, click, and it just hangs out there. Think about how many times you have made a patch cable or ordered a machined patch cable for in front of your rack and you needed to then move the device or upgrade the device and change the device. Now you've got to order a new cable. You got to wait a while while you order it, or you got to go back in your truck and find it, or you have to make the cable. And because you're making the cable with solid core cat six cable, perhaps that cable is kind of thick. It's not, you know, very easy to manipulate and keep clean in front of the rack. Worst yet, let's say it's not you working in front of the rack and the business that you did the work for had their son-in-law who just watches YouTube videos and he says, hey, I know how to do IT, and he makes a mess of the rack. Of course, that does bring in some extra work for us, but we have to admit that some customers don't want that problem. So this is where that solves that, this unit right there, and you're going to see how it's going to go ahead and just change the world for some of your customers who like to have a neat telecommunications rack. Not bad for a few days work and an extremely tight timeline. Here we have the rack installed. You can see the two bolts on the floor have been cleaned up and filed up in case somebody were to trip on them, they don't get cut. And here you have the three drawers on the bottom that will hold our stuff. As we move upward there, you see our UPS and our Fortinet device that is my test shelf right there that's why the shelf isn't bolted down and as we move upward you've got my mini plex server this little hp unit i'll be making some videos on it but i got it from a friend and he sells used devices this thing has been rocking as a plex server now right above that we've got this imac that i got for free and this unit will serve as something to monitor the network, monitor cameras, check things there right in front of the rack. And it's temporary. I don't know if I'm going to keep it there, but so far I'm loving its location. As we move just a bit higher than the Mac, you'll notice the home automation devices, our modem and other things right there that are really well covered, look really neat and clean. And then you have the network gear, nice and clean. And look at the patch box cabling so neat and if you notice if we were to move anything the patch box cabling could easily adjust and keep up with any changes and moves that we would make i love this setup this is awesome especially for my little home network and uh, if i were to ever move all i have to do is keep the house cable on the patch panels take the patch box units with me take the air units with me the airflow units and uh, take my network gear, but leave the 19 inch rack in place. And this would be very cool. I have seen million dollar homes with worse setups than this. This is the setup.exe quick mount installation tool that will help you replace your helper. It has these cool spring loaded pins which grab the rail quickly and easily. The bracket adjusts to any size or rail type. I love this tool. It stays in my bag all the time and I love to use it as a table in front of a rack because it can hold up to 100 pounds. It also has some perforations on each side where you can put a tool there and hold it together with some Velcro. I'll make a short on that in the future. Here's the dev mount. It will change your mind about cage nuts. Ever have one of those cage nuts spring fly across the room and hit your boss in the eye? Well, me neither, but it can happen. Look how easy it is to use these dev mounts. They have changed my life. It's all I wanna use. I ask customers all the time to please let me put it in the budget. It just makes the job go faster and easier. I can't show you enough why you should use these. Look how easy this is. One of the reasons I'm so enamored by Patchbox is that they have perhaps by chance created a set of tools that can save technicians backs, knees, and problem areas when lifting and balancing these devices make the job easier and safer. Think about the money you will save 
from employees not hurting themselves, not missing days, and keeping their backs healthy and knees healthy. Not needed, but purely for fun. Snap on ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket on here. We're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. You could use a nut driver. You could use your thumbs. You don't need to tighten it this tight, but I know how some of the people that watch my channel love to see snap on. And that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was fun to make it for you guys. I hope this inspires you to go ahead and spruce up your lab or your telecommunications room in your office or even in your house, depending on your setup. I hope that you even check out some of this patch box stuff because it is really cool. This is Ed the Old Tech Guy telling you I love you and I'm signing off.